Awesome, this is Valky Emma from Dreamlight. In this video I'm going to be showing how to blend Light on Pro Revolution with Studio Light Pro and specifically showing you how to blend the layers together using the custom folders. Alright, so here we have a scene, we have a Victoria 6 model, we have the Bright Loft prop and we're going to add Light on Pro Revolution. Once added, what I'm going to do is position the sunlight. So I'm going to go in here, click on Light click on sunlight so that the selected light now is previewable from here so I can click sunlight here and watch what the light sees. Well first of all we notice we have some ceiling or roof depending on which way you look at it. So I'm going to switch to tools and node selection and see if we can remove that ceiling from our scene by clicking the eye icon. That work here and I can click on this and that work here as well. Now, I'm doing this to, to let the lighting in, of course, into my scenery. There is another way of doing this. If I click back on this one, uh, sorry, this one here, you see that it has some specific windows here up in the ceiling. So we can grab this piece, select it, and actually resize it. Go to general and resize it. Because what we do, we can actually make that piece work in our advantage. Yes, it, it's covering the scene, but we can, you know, dictate and let the large windows play a little bit shadow role in here. All right, I know I'm getting a little bit advanced here. I want you to just grasp this concept. It's such a cool result we're gonna get by, by doing this. Okay, first of all, I'm gonna disable that because I want to see exactly where the sound is. Now I can orbit around here and simply position the sunlight so we get a nice lighting effect. And the thing I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna use the Light Tone Pro to light the scene. I'm gonna use the sunlight to create a kind of backslash side light effect. And I'm then gonna be using some of the Studio Light Pro's additional lights and add them to the custom folders, uh, which you can see here. You see Light Tone Pro has some custom folders. We're gonna be adding those uh, additional lights in here and render everything in layers. I'm gonna head back into Photoshop and I'm gonna show you some, some cool magic. All right, so sunlight selected. Now we can just browse position for it. And somewhere around here, we're gonna get a cool backslash side light that will just enable us to get some cool lighting on, onto the scene. Now these beams here, they can be removed. Uh, wooden beams, I can just remove them from this scene so that we don't get any shadows on our model. Alright, so having the sunlight now set, okay, maybe just lower it just a little bit. There we go. Having that set now, we're gonna add that roof or ceiling component once again. So I'm gonna click it back. Now I'm gonna use it to our advantage so that it's something that's gonna cast uh, for some reason I'm not moving it because I haven't selected it that's it so sorry for that okay so we are moving that and now you can choose to rotate it on the y-axis that means you're turning it towards the light or whatever you want to call it and that will just you know um, you can just use it freely to uh, turn the, the shadow pattern around and the shadow pattern I'm talking about is from the windows so for instance we can place this object here in such a manner that Victoria would get a shadow on her legs maybe that's not something you want and again I'm just I'm just showing you what's possible here. We can expand this some more to really get her to uh, be visible through one of these smaller windows. So I'm just gonna go in here. And I see I can expand it some more. So let's expand to 400%, see where we are, or maybe 500. I want really the shadows to embrace her on each side. Let's see where we are. Yeah, something like that. Okay, great. 
let it be like that we can always see how it you know connects later on light on pro camera i'm gonna copy the camera i had in the scene camera 2 Control c to copy and i'm gonna paste it onto the light on pro camera so that i'm moving that camera to this position okay so everything is set now and next i'm gonna just add some still light pro lights to this and then i'm gonna off to render actually before doing that i just love being creative here on the scene see that there is a thing you can do with props especially props that have all the stuff here like uh, walls separated because when you click on the wall i have a node selection you see that the wall is separated and you can actually disable it or even rotate it around your, your set and what i mean here if you take a look at the set it has various windows and stuff right and uh, Actually, by rotating it slightly around, you might just find a different position for it. They just might, you know, work better for, for the entire uh, thing. Um, what we can do here is grab the stairs, staircase, grab it, and unparent it. By having that done, I can also select the floor and unparent it. Now, if I select the building, the main uh, node of the building, what I can do is go to Y rotate and rotate the entire thing. See what happens? I'm getting different walls smashing through the camera. That's what I wanted. And somewhere around here, I got the nice window here. Cool. 180. Now, I'm going to move it back a little bit in my scene. Cool. See where we get some uh, some nice spot that would just shine a little bit more lighting into our scene. Somewhere around, maybe like that. So it just shows a little bit of something behind her, right? Something like that, and I can just you can you you know move things up and down as well as long as they don't disrupt your scene. You're always free to do that. And basically, what we've done now is we add a new dimension to our render, uh, which enables the, the the background to actually shine through. Maybe that's a bad idea. Maybe I would just ignore this for now because I want it to be a clean render so that we can just show off. Um, this nice set without any you know disruption sometimes adding stuff i just came up with this right now sometimes when you, when you add stuff it might just be too much and the main rule i think is is to be used is to use things simple right uh keep it clean less is more so let's undo that actually i just came, came up uh, of this idea just right now so you know how creative you can really get when creating your scenes so i'm gonna just undo and there we go we are back at square zero i think this is more cleaner and at least you know how you can do that in your next render to, to be a little more creative okay excellent so next what we're gonna do is add studio Life pro to our scene i'm just saving the scene here quickly all right now i'm gonna locate that go into uh, lights, Studio Light, Studio Light Pro, Dash Studio 4.6 uh, Edition. You can use this with the older version, it's just not gonna work as fast or good as this one. Now we got multiple options here, we got presets, you know, those ready like fashion, pinup or portrait or stuff like that, and you have individual lights. And really what you can do here is just keep this simple all right so we're gonna add a soft actually an area light we're gonna keep medium quality and we're gonna make it light orange actually white because it's gonna be rendered in layers so what we're gonna do here our Vicky needs the light pretty much from the front because we are using a strong if I draw with a pen here uh, we're gonna be adding a strong sunlight or light from this direction 
and I want to add something from this side to just fill in the blanks, all right? So we're going to add a key center. Double click there, it adds a component here that's area light key center. Now, if you look at it from the top and use wireframe, zoom out a little bit on this. We, we didn't actually have Victoria Center in our scene, so the, the, the light here is not really visible just yet. Okay, I'm gonna click to translate tool, and then there it is. So now grab that whole structure and move it to here. Actually, on top of Victoria. That's the main. Is the way it's designed, to like Pro, is that you wanna, you know, grab the center of those uh, nodes here, so to speak, and you wanna. Um, move the center to the center of your character now here is the area light as you can see so we, what we can do now is go ahead and why rotate the whole structure the whole area light thing we just added i'm gonna just rotate on the y-axis and the whole thing goes around victoria and i'm gonna just add somewhere around here now from the very front view i think i'm gonna just go here See where we can locate that. Here we see her. You see the light here on the side. It's pretty good. It's just where we want it. You can also X rotate it to go around Victoria, orbit her around to fine tune that exactly. Now, when done, we are pretty much done for rendering. It's that simple, guys. It's just you know, pony click. Let me just switch to wireframe. I think we got the lights. They're sliding in the way of the camera. All right, so what we're gonna do now is take the whole thing and put it into Lightroom Pro Revolution custom folder one. There it is. When it's in there, we are ready for render. Now, since we are still in here, why not just add a little bit more, more of it, right? So let's go in here and see if we can add well, why don't just add one more? Let's add one more. Key C, just double click on it. It will add another light. So let's go to top view and switch to that secondary one here. And we can now move it, center it around Victoria. Right there. And now we can just wide rotate it to position. And what I'm gonna do with this one is I'm gonna actually use it slightly from the other side like from behind and I'm gonna let that light be slightly from below as well so I'm gonna use X rotate to let it just come a little bit from underneath like almost like it's bouncing from the floor upwards towards Vicky okay now note I'm not playing with any intensities I'm not playing with any colors I'm not doing anything out of that uh, wireframe and I'm gonna check that secondary light, put in the secondary custom light folder. Now, of course, you can, we're not gonna do that right now, but you can go into presets, you can load a complete fashion preset, like medium A, you can, you, you can load it, right? You can take the entire fashion preset and put it into custom lights 3. That will render as a separate folder. Now, I'm gonna remove it because we're not gonna use that. It's just an example that you can't do those things. All right, we are left with rendering. I'm gonna do that right now. I'm gonna do quick render settings check. I'm gonna keep 900 to fit my recording size window. I'm gonna use quality shading rate 0 0.8, slightly better than one. And we are done. All right, render, render LDPR. And it's gonna ask for a folder. Select base render directory. I'm just gonna click choose and it's rendering. So I'm gonna leave it at that and I'll see you in a moment. And actually, I'm gonna pause this rendering and I'm gonna do a little bonus here. I'm gonna add a depth of field to the camera. So having the camera selected here, I'm gonna go to parameters tab, click on camera, depth of field on. 
and focal distance I'm gonna set that to something we can watch from the top view here so I'm gonna zoom in on Victoria and the camera all right I'm gonna set it to maybe just uh, I don't know 200 just a setting so here I'm gonna set this reddish line if you will slightly on top Victoria so I'm gonna extend it some more the red dot on her face brilliant and I'm just gonna double check from the front whether that really you know uh, places that marker where I want it to be and it appears to do so great all right having that selected switch back to the camera i'm going to decrease this to get a slightly higher effect and i'm going to go in here and select slightly higher rendering quality because i'm using dof all right so seven seven like that and save the scene so i just want to throw in a little bit of bonus in here because I think this render will just turn out gorgeous and I want to have another dimension with the background. So render LDPR, same folder, and there we go. And I'll see you in Photoshop in just a moment. Excellent, all right, so what we're gonna do now is once rendered, we're gonna just load the images straight into Photoshop and you're gonna load all of them at once. So go to file, open. All right, and I'm gonna go into render library and just locate the last folder here here it is excellent now they all need to be in this particular order right so the first one hold down shift select the last one click on open great now we're gonna locate our actions palette which is show actions here and we're gonna go in here and just choose combine let me just turn this off all right combine and click on play now this will add all the layers together meaning it might not turn out the best render we have seen because they all are at maximum power but here it is, here is our, you know, um, just, and because I'm having such a small window, I'm gonna move these actions out of my way, just let them be there, and I'm gonna extend this window so it's slightly larger, so we can see a little bit more in detail. Okay, so we've got everything, every layer now showing at full, capacity which maybe isn't the best thing to do but that's what's happening right now all right so first of all I'm gonna just for now turn off these custom layers we just did I'm gonna just turn off them and I'm gonna focus on getting these layers we can see here right first so what we have here is extend this window we got the sunlight and sun copy so these are dual layers of the sunlight and it, I think it works pretty well at 50. So I'm around here. Let it just be there. We got the sun bounce. These are the, the bouncing effects of the sunlight. They need to obviously be there. I can just fine tune a little bit. Something like that. We got the sky. That eliminates the entire room structure we can let that be as is however we can turn it down and do a little bit here but we can do that later um actually we can do that right now just add a mask here click on the mask have you know use white and bl black and white and just add a small effect here using this gradient tool here right just turn it off, wipe it off so it's a bit cleaner at the top. Okay, then we got the bouncing occurring from that skylight, and we can adjust that as well. There's a lot of bouncing going on from that one. We can just turn it down a little bit. 
And same thing here. Um, we can actually add more, you know, wiping effects and tone down a bit later on. We got the ambient. That's the overall light here. You see, we can just tone it down a little bit. Just filling the blanks. I don't want it to be completely dark. And we have, we have no background here. Obviously, we got no fog and haze. Um, that's mostly for outdoor scenes, but it will also work indoors if you have a long enough set and you have strong fog. It will obviously leave as low indoors. Okay, so we got a custom one. That's really shocking me, you know, uh, dominating light here. Uh, what we can do with this light is actually add a mask to it. Now, we can tell the software that we want to focus this light on this area but not so much on the rest, right? So having that selected, I can now select inverse and paint that with black. So I'm gonna use a black brush, black, and just paint it away. All right, once done, I can deselect and still having that mask selected here, I can add a Gaussian blur to it. So I'm blurring the edge and I'm gonna enter maybe 50 or whatever value I think that works for this image. Once done, what I've done is now I've added this mask to this layer so it doesn't, you know, add itself to the entire render. So I can just tone it down a little bit and just illuminate this slightly here from the front. So I'm getting a little bit of lighting on the model here. Now, for the secondary custom light, I can do the very same thing. Uh, I can actually borrow this. I can click Alt and click here to select this. I can click then Control A and Control C to select all and copy, use Command on the Mac. Then head back here and create a new mask. Click on that mask, Alt and click to actually select it. Now Control V to paste it. And now this one is also dinged if you want, if you like. And I can just Control how much of it we are using. This one comes a little bit from below, from the right side. So we just add a little bit of depth to the shadows. So it kind of makes the render a little more vibrant. Uh, so what we can do here is actually increase the sunlight. I see that when you, you know start adding all the other layers of lights, it's very easy to just, you know, uh, when the light is, you know, when you have more overall light, the individual lights might need to be a little bit stronger to dominate. Uh, I like just strong, you know, contrast in the image. So uh, you gotta do whatever that works for you, right? And guys, we have adjusted this live and interactive in just a few minutes. So what we can do is actually save this now as a mix. Okay, we can just save it and we can now combine it like Miami, filter Miami and just hit play. That's it. Now we've got some additional cool functions in here. Uh, you have the uh, the glow effect, the gamma, fake gamma I should say. But these effects are some, you know, you can play with them. Whatever that you just seen, I think I like it a little bit brighter. You have glow one. How much glow you want to have. Got glow two. All right, we've got the tint. I think I like that 10. And you have this fadeaway corners that I think we can just use on our, around 20. That was the default setting, kind of was out for this image. And that it, that's it, guys. That's our refinery image. You can save this one as well. You can call that mix two, right? And we are done. This is our completed render. So there you have it. That's the functionality you have from Lightroom Pro Revolution that extends into Studio Light Pro. When you have both, you can combine everything and you know light your images live and interactively and reposition or I should say remodel, repaint the lights and how much they affect your scene live and interactive inside Photoshop gives you tremendous power of your final uh, result. Awesome, that's it. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you will enjoy this package and go ahead and have fun lighting your scenes. See you next time.